Hey, how are we doing? It's Don. Live show time right now. Busy, 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 busy week. Uh, geez, it's just been from one thing to another. Good stuff, not bad stuff. Uh, we've got some new stuff going on. We signed some papers with somebody. A lot of stuff going on left and right. Kids are back in school, so I don't know how busy or how many people will be on tonight. This week, I know there's a lot of school activities going on. We had... Um, parent-teacher, um, meet-the-teacher, uh, local events, the the pep stuff, all that kind of stuff going on for school. My son had stuff out at college. Uh, he had an honor society thing that he had to go to, um, stuff like that. So it's been really, really busy. Fourth quarter, working its way closer and closer. Um, the title is literally, we're going to talk a little bit about how much money you can make. And before anybody says anything, I have not made a million in one year on eBay ever we have made a million in several years put together, but never a million. So I know that question is going to come up. I've used that term once before, and that was the first thing that everybody hit me with. We have not sold a million dollars in one year on any eBay or really anywhere combined as of yet. So <clears throat> but the point is, can you make a million dollars on the year? That's literally the gist of the conversation. Um, we'll get into that in just a minute here. Um, how you doing, Carl? I see that you are facing down on the hurricane. We were there for, um, geez, several, several hurricanes. So one went right over Disney when I worked there. I know we were obviously in the coast farther, farther in, inland, but hopefully you're all doing good and anybody who is facing the path is going to be okay. Last I heard, um, it wasn't that bad. We have relatives in Florida personally, and we know 20 or 30 different people throughout Florida from working at Disney for 10 plus years. So we do contact and hear stuff from people constantly. Um, people even send us stuff to sell and stuff from Disney and stuff. So I've talked about that before. We won't get into a big Disney conversation or anything. Hopefully everybody can hear me. Hopefully everything is going well for everybody. <clears throat> Excuse me. I literally just rushed in here at the last minute and cranked it on. I've had employees here all day since um, I think the first employee was here at 1030 this morning. Had kid issues to deal with too before that. I've been up since five is a typical day for us. So I don't know what everybody else works, but um, I'm usually like five or six in the morning up Monday through Saturday. And I usually hit the bed like, I don't know, maybe 12, one o'clock at the latest. Four hours is about all I sleep. Um, workaholic or whatever you want to call it. I don't sleep much more than that. Even if I have a day off, like for Sunday morning, I can sleep in and I never do. Usually up at the latest, you know, before seven usually on Sunday. That's again, that is my day to sleep in. Uh, wife and I are going out tomorrow night, so we're going to relax and enjoy ourselves a little bit. No, we've got a big holiday weekend coming up also, so hopefully that uh, does very well. <clears throat> I will look at some questions here in just a minute. I've got a few items that I picked up today that I will shoot out and we'll discuss. Uh, let's see here. Well, I'll get these out in a little bit here, but um, something interesting, something different, something I haven't pointed out that uh, could be a deciding factor in helping you make some more money. Um, we'll wait till some more folks are on. <clears throat> I've got sinuses. We've got blooms in the backyard from some of the sunflower we've got a field of sunflowers almost in the backyard but um sinuses uh anyway but we'll cut into some other stuff here as well we'll talk more about the topic uh potentials what it would take um i also i have my other channel live the art professor i'm gonna do it's all gonna be uh related to arts and crafts that you can make money on you can sell stuff art-wise across the entire internet, um, all over the place. You can do it locally at fairs, festivals, Christmas bazaars. I mean, the list of opportunities to create, sell, market, <clears throat> and do your own items is horrendously high right now, especially in like the homey folk art style Christmas decorations. Those are just the bomb. A lot of the stuff that I sell, people actually buy to turn into Christmas ornaments. So, you know, I I've been into this kind of stuff for a long time. I do a lot of art stuff, toys. Um, I'm giving away one of the clowns. I'm going to have a, a big um, rules page up for the, the clown giveaway. The clown I'm giving away for Halloween is 
something that I usually sell for like 150 or better. So it's something that's worth some money. It's hand painted by me. It is one of the ones in the video um, for my art that you can see on this channel. So you can see it being created. You can get the actual piece. Shipping and all is included for the winter for Halloween. It's already a done deal. I'm going to have a video showing how to wrap it as well up. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there'll be that given away. Uh, Christmas, I have something to give away as well. Um, and then um, I am dressing up again for Halloween, as I always do. Uh, so I will have a live Halloween um, cosplay event on Halloween evening, probably. Maybe the uh, night before. I'm not really sure yet, depending on what our family's activities are for Halloween. But anyway... <clears throat> Uh, let's see here. Where are we at? Let's see who's on. I know I don't know how many people are going to be on tonight. As I said, there's a lot going around on here. I don't know how late we'll be today either. Just again, because I've got a lot going on. We've expanded our business and I did sign some paperwork. So um, we are investing in some other things right now. I may touch on some of them in the near future, but I'm not going to shut out what's going on as of yet. Um, the other channel is going to have a real nice series on um, at the jeweler's store again. So that's coming up soon. That's going to be one of the earlier ones. You're, I've got a glass blower that's going to uh, going to be on the show on the other channel. It's somebody uh, who's actually uh, internationally uh, sold. Um, probably going to do some gallery visits, things along that line. There'll be a lot more hands-on. It's stuff that I do anyway, so it's not like extra stuff. I go down and we watch stuff like that. Um, jewelry wise we do have a kiln and do cast our own so we're going to go to a place that has vacuumed uh, metal casting equipment and things like that in the other channel and it's all stuff that people make money at I'm going to show you the inner workings of a eBay business as a jeweler a big time jeweler and you can kind of see how they do it as well um, they've got a whole floor that just handles eBay for their jewelry business too. So, um, I'm, I'm going to go into some detail. We're going to go to like bazaars for, um, you know, Christmas and stuff like that. I, I know people who run a bazaar at a church. I was a member of a church for a long time and, um, I already have permission to bring in cameras and things like that too. So we're going to get to see a lot of stuff and you're going to get to see some really interesting ways people make money off of arts and crafts, skill level, it can be from the bottom all the way up to the top. You can make money doing almost anything. You don't have to be super artistic to do it. Uh, you just have to have a niche or something unique or special. And that could be anything. And I'm just going to show you some of that. I mean, I'm not the best artist in the world. Um, there's people far worse than me that make a lot of money at this. So, you know, there's, there's opportunity. So that's going to be the other channel. Um, I'm going to try and be very specific. It's all going to be stuff that's related to making money um, because that's what the whole game is here. You know, most people don't do art or anything else except for money. I do art either way. I've done drawing since I was like six or seven when Star Wars came out. First stuff I ever drew in my life. So everything's been tied around Star Wars. Um, so anyway, let's see. Aaron, welcome, Aaron. How are you doing? Glad to have everybody here. Hopefully, again, everybody is staying safe. Hustle and Grind Calgary, how are you doing? Good evening to you. Carl, welcome, welcome. Number 18 on Art Professor, thank you very kindly. Again, uh, the other channel may not be for everybody. I was thinking about putting all the content just on this same channel, but this is more along the lines of reselling, and art is just not reselling. So I, I don't want to muddy the waters and, and you know turn anybody off. I want to keep this channel what it is right now. It's not going to affect you know differences in videos. I do several videos in one day usually, uh, and people do edit many of the videos for us, so I don't worry about that either. Uh, so Sundays I usually do art stuff every sun every Sunday probably for most of my life. So I'm just going to shoot videos while I'm doing the stuff I would do normally for art, or if we're going out to like a studio, it's probably going to be on a Friday night with the wife. We'll get to see. There'll be other people around. Um, it'll be a relaxing environment. We'll go to some. Um, there's some um, wine events and in, in, uh, studio tour events downtown and the art section down there too will hit. Um, I'll travel to some other cities. There's a huge 
uh, nationally recognized art show here that I will uh, hopefully get into for um, some video as well. Um, it's one that actually has the same last name. The people who sponsor it is my wife, and there's some connection in it. Um, so we're hoping that there might be a way for us to get in ahead of time and get to see some really neat, interesting things. I used to do art shows and set up in, in Florida. I did the uh, Festival of the Masters at Disney as well as the uh, West Palm um, juried show and stuff like that, too. I've placed in the top three on uh, four different occasions in the past, including tri-state and county shows too so I, i've been around the block with the the art industry and art market i've been on the orlando sentinel several times on the cover of my artwork um i'm in museums the maitland art center in florida owns a piece of mine so does ucf and valencia community college so um you know i'm in the state purchase program in florida just because of that you have to have two state purchases to be uh, eligible for that so um, that's one of my pluses I was able to do that so um, anyway enough on the art art stuff I do have links for it uh, one just one more thing on the art stuff here before I forget I get all the time people asking me on specifics do I sell this I, the frogs that I've done even some people here locally I've shown them around trying to get some business for postcards that aren't even printed yet um, the artwork in the art professor's first video, that is for sale right this very second. I just put it up um, because I do get people asking on that. It's actually, there's a link in the uh, comment section down below to the item that's live right now. So if anybody is interested in original art, it's a 19 by 24 hand rendered. It's the exact same one that's in the video. I don't usually do that, but uh, I thought I would, I would do it. I've got more than my fair share of artwork here at the house so um <clears throat> that piece is for sale uh so again if you're interested may not be everybody's cup of tea and i'm not a big marketer as everybody does know but uh that's what's going on um let's just finish some call outs i'm going to touch on patreon a little bit because i do see quite a few people from patreon in here um i do have a good update for you now um which i'll give out in just a minute here but welcome mary how are you doing <clears throat> Jeez, excuse me Everybody here has had sinus. My youngest missed two days of school, and it's these. Uh, we've got flowers in the backyard, and they're just everywhere. And the the pollen and, and scent in the yard is horrendous. I just want to cut them down, but I they look so nice. But um, let's see here, Miss Mimi, welcome. Uh, Penny, welcome, welcome. Thomas, how are you doing? Uh, yeah, I was just a few minutes late today. Let's see, Carl has batteries, food, water, beer, got to have the beer, yep. Plants around, yeah, we usually did all that stuff too. Um, we didn't move out of town or anything for it, but. How you doing, Treasure Expert? Uh, let's see here, tub, yeah, we always fill the tub up too, that's one thing we always did. Tim C., how are you doing? Wubba lubba dub dub, good evening, good evening. Hoptman, how are you doing? <clears throat> Excuse me, boy, this is just killing me today. <clears throat> yeah, I saw that hall message you left up there, Hopman. Uh, I'd love to find a cabinet for 20 bucks just full, not let alone an entire storage unit of just paper stuff. We've gotten lucky. I do have some uh, boxes we're going to open up from a storage locker probably in this coming up week here. I've got like 40 or 50 boxes full. Some of it was in just thrown in stuff and we had to box some of it up but a lot of it's literally just as it is none of it's been looked through just because i get so much stuff in that haven't touched it so that'll be interesting but good luck congratulations hopman on that creative business 339 fancy pink how are you doing <clears throat> hey rick duke how are you doing my great finds for you welcome scott costa hello patreon bello turns four dollars and 100 literally Sounds like you probably already sold something. Um, well, since we've got Patreon, I do see quite a few Patreons in here. On the uh, guide that I'm putting together, I'm going to shoot out probably the first part of it tomorrow. <clears throat> Boy, I'm sorry. Now, I there's no way I can do the guide I want to do in any short period of time. And instead of just taking forever to get one out because it's going to be extensive, um, I'm going to do it in sections by labels 
and I've started with the most common ones first. So you're going to get a real good look at it. It's going to have images, the whole works. It's, it's going to tie specifics to those images. So you can easily cross-reference them, and it's going to be the easiest stuff to find. Maybe not the most expensive, but it'll be the easiest you should be able to quickly get into. Once you start getting the easy ones, the rest of it's going to pretty much fall into, into way because you'll get to know the records. It's stuff that you should see. It's stuff that even I've talked about and then in the haul video or one of the, the sourcing trips that I've shown you, like the next time I've literally found that it was exact same items. So, and I'm not going to holler out too much of that, but... Um, uh, you'll see that hopefully tomorrow night. I literally spent a couple hours working on it. I don't know the format, the finished format. It's probably going to be a PDF with an ISBN on it. Um, I don't know whether it's going to be like password coded or what we're going to figure out on that. Um, <clears throat> I've really thought about that too, and I've tried to transfer some of that to a phone, but it would take you, it would take hundreds of pages on the phone, and I don't know how practical it would be because it's not a a simpleton list. I'm going into detail. It's not like just a bunch of stuff. Say, hey, buy this, buy that. I've got personal um, quick notes on, you know, what this means, what that means, what the terms are, what the breakdown on the item is going to be. So when you're looking at the, the, the guide, it's going to be like a, a, a guide book almost with a lot of information, but it's going to be very centered in on very specifics and only those that you should find. I'm not going to give you a record that there's only been three in the world that's ever shown up. You know, obviously, if it's not in the guide you, and it's something you haven't seen, you're going to get a gist on what's commoner by the guide. And then from there, if you don't see it, you'll, you'll know to look it up. I'll give you some label names and things and, and stuff like that as well as performers on those labels right in that same section. So it, it'll be a visual, trackable guide, so to speak. So um, and I, I'm not going to put in like conditions. It's not going to have all that kind of stuff in it. So it's just going to have the, the, the most important aspect of it is the information the, 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 the part that you don't have in your, in your brain yet, it's, it's going to be in the guide. So anyway, <clears throat> I'm a new seller and your videos have been very helpful. Thank you, Teddy, Mark, Mark Hart. Sorry about that. Uh, Rob, greetings from AZ, home of monsoon land, monsoon land. Okay. Hey, Marikex7, how are you doing? And thanks for the call on the hearing. Hang on just a second. My feed's just all over the place, and it's already bopping disappeared. Hang on. Not starting out good for the feed. <clears throat> Let's see. Hoffman, I worked for a liquidation company and took their sales from 30 k to $1 million in just under 12 months. Boston decided not to pay commissions and bonus, so I quit. $1 million can be achieved. That is 100% true. Let's let's hop into that for just a second here, and I'll pop back down to the some more questions. Now, if you asked me 10 years ago, could I make a million dollars on eBay? I would have thought you were crazy. And I, I'm not. This isn't some fantasy. This is this is me. This is literally what things I thought about back in the day. Part of the reason I never went full time is I, I never could see a way to get that much money. We made thousands sometimes when we did listings back in the day, you know, prior to going full time, you know, on the weekends, a couple times a month. But I never saw it as a full time. I, I was too comfortable in the position I worked in. Whether I hated the job or not, I knew at least I'd get a paycheck. And the risks going full time on eBay or selling on Amazon FBA or whatever you, you're doing online are the same risks. It doesn't matter the business format it's, or the platform. It's the same exact risk. So, Nowadays, take fast forward 10 more years to now, I can see numbers that I would have never thought in my wildest dreams that we would ever hit. You know, a quarter of a million dollars a year is nothing um, in my mind anymore at all. It, it means nothing if you say a quarter. And these are sales I'm talking about right this minute now. Making a million dollars and selling a million are two different things. My goal is to make a million dollars, million dollars profit. After all is said and done, after everything's paid off, end of the year, my taxes are done, I'd love to make a million dollars. That is my goal now in my book. Don't want to be a rich money grubber. I'm not looking to do that. You know, I want to be safe, I want to be comfortable, and I want, you know, something for my kids. So that's my goal. You can have any goal you want. You may not want to work that hard. You may not want to do it. But, you know, and, and this goal, I, I had this big vision the other day, an epiphany of, of sorts, like a, a defining moment, I guess, in my head that the numbers that I thought were crazy just even a couple years ago are, are not crazy at all anymore. 
to where things can go. And, and these days, things have like skyrocketed. It's ballooned up to a point where, you know, we're really uh, contemplating a lot of bigger moves because, you know, we're, we're going to hit a bottleneck, you know, with, with stuff, with space, with, with employees and things like that. I never thought I would go into looking into VAs and all kinds of other stuff, but even at this point, you know, I watched a good video on Bearded Pickers channel. They were talking about VAs and stuff. Now, I've got my own sources for that kind of stuff, so I don't, you know, I wasn't interested in that content, but good stuff, good conversation either way. Um, but, you know, that might be a possibility even for us. We'll keep the full-time employees. We'll keep our regular staff here. I am losing one who's going into the Air Force, so I will lose one person. But, um, you know, maybe I could get VAs just to handle sites that aren't as important that we do the wholesale lines with and stuff like that. They can answer emails and do all the menial work that um, just can be done from anywhere. And that could speed up and help us. But these are all steps that I never would have even possibly even remotely thought about five or ten years ago. But nowadays, man, you know, when you look at your your numbers, your bank accounts, your your sales records, um, you know, it, it's, you know, I'm overwhelmed in, in many cases on, you know, where things have taken me and it's not, it's not intentional. It's, I'm not trying to brag and I get that and people say that, but that's not me at all. And if you knew me, I'm shy. I'm not a, an attractive person. I'm not anything that's special. I don't have any major skills. I have a degree and that's, you know, something I did for myself, but Everybody can be wherever they want to be. And, and I know people say, well, you just talking that, that. That's not real life. You know, I thought that too. But, you know, if you don't mind putting in, in I'm talking a lot of work. And I, it's no exaggeration. I worked, I still work a lot, you know. But I, I know where I want to go and I got something I want to get. So, you know, whatever it takes to get there, that's what I put in. And I'm, I'm doing the efforts, you know, 14-hour days still are fine with me. It's fun time. It's not like work. I'm not slaving, unloading boxes as a general manager in a store anymore, which is what general managers do in restaurants and uh, retail and, and any of those kind of th stuff. And I know there's some folks out here who've been in those positions. They know just what I'm talking about. I ran Applebee's as a general manager, Cracker Barrel, um, and then Gaddy's, which was a huge establishment that sat like a thousand people. It had a game room. We had bumper cars inside the building. You know, 100 video games and just a whole bunch. It was a huge area. It's a huge, huge area, about the size of, geez, maybe a Kroger's or something is, is the establishment size. There's some folks in here who probably know what Gaddy's Pizza is. But I, I've been around the block. I've done a lot of things. I've got the a lot of experience. Those jobs are just awful jobs when when you get down to the the work and what you got to do. And, and um, you know, this is, it's just so different Uh you know, it's hard to even wake up and think that, you know, this is what's happened with my life. And, you know, I'm not, again, I'm not trying to brag. I'm not, this is just what's happened. This is just the way it is. It's just the facts. It's nothing that I've, I can control or anything. Um, money rolls in, things change, things have ballooned. And I, I don't, I don't live paycheck to paycheck, thank God, you know, anymore. And no criticism towards anybody who's in any other state because, you know, we lived on welfare at one point, just to let you know. So, you know, you've got to do what you got to do. You know, I don't know what else to tell you. You know, I buckled down and said it's not going to be me anymore. We got out of school. I went through an entire savings, you know, quite a bit of savings from, from saving up for years. Blew it all trying to get work, and then, you know, it just didn't happen. So, you know, you know, I don't want to go on with that conversation here, but you know, we've we've had an epiphany is the point, and a million dollars is not a un unvisionable amount anymore. It means it means um, not as much as it did before a million dollars even because numbers that we're getting are are getting getting up there. You know, in four years we can do a million dollars, or we could four or five years ago. Four in four years, a million dollars was doable in sales. Now, you know, we've really stepped up from that, and that was just with eBay back in the day when, when I'm talking about. So now you add in Etsy, Amazon, um, you know, Hub and Discogs and Walmart and eBay and all these sites add in together, you know, your sales numbers are a joint number. Everything goes into one funnel at the end, and that's your entire sales for your year. So, it's not just eBay now that money comes in at. That's 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 a, a factor here to to consider. If you're only on one platform, and you do want to do more money, and you do want to say you, you do want to do a million dollars, 
it's it's doable on eBay, just eBay, but it's quicker, it's more efficient. You get better sales and more turnover on your material if you're on more than one site with the exact same items. So, you know, this is goes into back into cross-listing and promoting our listings on other sites, you know, and doing other venues and, and avenues for, you know, promotions to boost the sales. We st I still go to local businesses and market personal items and, and stuff that we make or stuff that we have occasionally. I'll do that still. We'll produce, you know, resin figures or something, and they'll go to uh, shops, art galleries, toy stores, hobby shops, all that kind of stuff. And there's probably 60 or so that we've hit around here, you know, in this general area within, say, 100 miles. So, you know, there's so many other op opportunities to sign contracts, to sign deals, to sell stuff above and beyond just eBay. And I know there's a lot of people out there. Being entrepreneurial is, is going be above and beyond and, and looking for all these other ways that no one's looking for. Looking outside the box is, is taking your product if you've got a wholesale deal that you bought from a wholesaler and taking it to a local shop and getting them to buy it from you as their wholesale contract for these items. It's a no-brainer because on stuff like that, even if you're doing, you know, selling the same items on Amazon, there's no cross issues. And, and I was talking to somebody about that too. So let's say you want to do wholesale and you're going to do FBA on, on Amazon. You can do that. You can also, though, if you get a good enough deal on the wholesale or you can go in on a bigger purchase or, um, you know, pallet-wise buy wholesale and pallet content and you, you have enough gravy, enough meat on the bone, you can sell those locally to smaller shops. Like uh, a good example, there's candy stores around here that make some of their own candy, but then they buy a bunch of it wholesale-wise. And there's wholesale companies around here that, you know, will sell massive quantities of candy certain times of the year. A lot of these people get them from people like that, people who don't produce the product that are like a middleman, a third-party seller. Third-party are what we are. Third-party is what FBA sellers are. Third party can can work offline as well in a local establishment as long as you've got good contacts with wholesale deals. Like a trade show is a good place to make a wholesale contact that can supply you with stuff like this. Especially if it's somebody new just coming into the area. If you hit these these trade shows, you're getting in before it's gone anywhere. And in some cases you can get some deals. You have to show that you can sell as well. So if you've got a, a decent size account and you're selling, you know, six digits on eBay or even just one platform, you've got it in right there. You can show that you're a stable business. You've got a BOP. You can cover the cost of their insurance, a BOP business owner's policy, which is essential when you're taking hold of someone's merchandise. Your goal in doing wholesale FBA for Amazon or doing it on eBay is to be able to purchase merchandise without putting a dime out. So you're not spending your money. So if you're getting good with a wholesaler, what will happen is they'll give you a 30-day net due or a 30-day bill on it. So basically, I can pick up merchandise. It's not due for 30 days. If I can market it good enough, if I can put it in the right spot or in front of the right person, I can sell enough of it to pay for the entire purchase before that 30 days is up that's playing with someone else's money and I know that sounds a little odd but that is a bona fide way to make money it's not illegal there's nothing wrong with doing it it's almost like they're lending you on credit merchandise um, and you have to be in good standing they'll probably run a credit report on you to do something like that when you're first starting off into it you'll probably have to fill out a bunch of forms they'll probably want to see your license you know things along that line a BOP though is essential a lot of people don't have one, but a, a lot of wholesale companies may not work with you uh, because of that. So let's say you're you're just starting off, and even if you pay up front, you could lose that merchandise, and you know they may not want to ever sell to you again. If you have insurance, it's covered. It's not going to hurt your business. So, I mean, there's just so many reasons if you're going to advance your business to invest in things like a BOP and stuff like that. So, anyway, a million dollars is not a big number anymore to to. Again, that, that sounds kind of odd. Um, I don't want to say it like that. I don't know how to how to express it without sounding like an idiot or, or pompous. I, I'm totally not not the, the 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 direction I'm trying to head on that. But um, the point is that you know the sky's the limit. There's people who started off you know walking out on the street that now are worth millions. Um, famous Amos, he started off from nowhere. I mean, there's just so many stories of people that showed up in this country or showed up and, you know, $10 in their pocket and they're now running their own company. 
the, the biggest stumbling block for anybody making a million dollars is the, the thought that they don't think they can make a million dollars. That's not possible. That's what I thought. You know, I thought, you know, there's no way on earth I'm ever going to be able to make a million dollars a year. And again, I'm not making a million dollars a year, but the way it's going in, in the near future, that can be a, a completed goal. And then I will have to set another one after that. It's, it's, you set goals for yourself and you work towards those goals. If you hit a goal, you got to come up with another another goal. We hit a goal the other day, and this is, again, why I signed some papers and we're advancing it. I hit a goal, so now I have to come up with another goal. And the only thing that makes sense is to round it off to, to a million dollars. It might take a couple of years. It might take five years. I don't know how long it will take, but at the pace it's going, it's going to happen. You know, in, in a reasonable time frame that will hit, you know, at least a million in sales within the next few years because there's 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 no stopping the train, I guess, once it's going down the track. Unless I blow it, I lose faith, I lose lose confidence, or I something happens weird, you know, because it, it's like a, it's all an autopilot, you know, everything keeps going. I just stuff shows up, I keep finding stuff, I, I can walk up on stuff, it's it's not even hard anymore, and it's it's so weird to to come from the bottom end of the, the the rung to be in a ditch so far down. We we had no money to do a single thing, and to to be in the state in that in eight years time is is again people think eight years, but you know I'm a lot older than a lot of you out there. I turned fifty, so it, it it's it's a long time coming. It's it's working since you know I was fourteen, you know, for somebody, and and it's been a long time coming. Still ain't there yet, but, you know, it's a number you guys can get. You know, don't think that making a million dollars is is crazy or even just selling a million dollars with a, you know, 75 to 80 percent profit margin when at the end of the day. That's a goal. That's a goal. Our goal now is to at least do a million dollars in sales, if not make a million dollars in, in profit for a year. You know, the, 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 the end goal is to expand your business. We've got multiple businesses. We've got the art stuff. I've got postcards coming down the line, hence the art professor. Um, so, again, I do have the other channel here. I'm not going to glorify or promote it constantly throughout the show. I'm going to put it up once here and then once more at the end. So if you do want to see my other channel, it is here. It's just going to discuss how to make money off of art. But that's another aspect of it. Just because you're doing eBay and that's doing great doesn't mean you can't start something else on your own. Do find some other ways to look outside the box for other opportunities. You know, there's people who drive for Lyft and Uber and things like that and then do eBay on the side. There's just so many other options. And I'm not saying Uber or Lyft is good or bad. It's just another option to make money. For me, I do art. I do art whether I was making money. I'll do them. I'll draw them. I'll give them to people occasionally. Sometimes I just wasn't happy with it after it's done. The wife loves it. I hate it. I'll rip it up and throw it away. It's just something I do. I've always been that way. I'm, I get, I'm particular on that. I've got you know OCD and uh, ADD and all that, and had it since I was a child. So I get aggravated with art more than I get you know if I don't like something. But um, anyway, let's get on to the the eBay talk some more here. Um, Articul I'm sorry, Art Electium 2. I'm sure I butchered that. Scored four rare pre war 78s for 20 bucks today. 40 of them. That sounds like a good deal. Uh, just do your research and your homework on them. That is the biggest thing I can tell you. Midnight here. Where would Midnight be? Obviously, another country would be my guess. Have you ever sold old Matchbox or Hot Wheels? Sell them all the time. Pink are the best color to get on the red lines. Anything pink, in fact. Well, I'm not going to step off camera, but I have some sitting over here right now that I just got the other day. Um, Hot Wheels, for me, if it's a red line, Hong Kong, Pat Penned, any of those, um, I only have them for about a week, if less. If I put them up for a bin, they're usually gone the first or second day. Um on any of the single decent car conditions for any of those. Matchbox, I do very well. Lindsney, um, anything boxed, I sell incredibly well. Another thing that, that people do miss is Matchbox made some of the Robotech figures as well, the action figures. So I love the, the action figures by Matchbox, believe it or not. They're really good quality figures. Robotech figures in general. I remember when the, the show was out in the 80s, so... It's another thing Matchbox did. They've got a couple other things like that too, but I love old Hot Wheels and cars. Again, pink red line is the bomb. There are some pink ones that can go for thousands, and I mean thousands, five, ten thousand dollars for a pink Hot Wheels. We're talking about like the the metallic candy apple-ish pink. 
those are the best. Pink Christmas ornaments are the best. There's just so many things that the pink option is the one you want. The reindeers for Christmas, like the dream pets and stuff, the pink Christmas reindeers with the flocking and the mica are like the most expensive ones. It's usually pink for everything. Uh, pink is just such a popular color. Yeah, I've, I've sold the ones I had as a child myself, so not many of them left. We usually put fireworks in them, and we blew them up in the backyard, an M80 to the roof or something like that, or we'd tape one underneath it and partially bury it underneath, and it'd shoot a big hole in the yard, and what was left of it usually wasn't much. It usually shattered the frame. Um, hey, J.I., how are you doing this evening? Glad to have you. Nancy, welcome, Nancy. I will try to get on to Patreon tonight. I, I, I've... Again, a lot of things have been going on. First week back for my oldest. My youngest was sick this week. The wife was sick for two days. Um, so this week has, for time-wise, my time's been pulled all over the place. I've got employees still trying to cram in hours before the end of the month. So again, as I said, this, this morning I was working since like 5. I had 42 items to mail this morning. Uh, I got up early just to make sure I could mail them get my youngest to school, help my oldest get his stuff because he wanted some help, and I had to help him get some books uh, money-wise. So I went out there with him and just charged, or not charged, I purchased some books for him. Um, so today has been a really busy day. Um, again, I have been working on the, the guides for those in Patreon. I don't want to keep going back to Patreon, but there's quite a few Patreons in here. Um, so the guidebook's going to be in parts, pieces. It's going to be booked out. First guide I've ever done. Again, I know I did say I wasn't going to do one, but... I'm not going to do the guides like everybody else is doing. And people have showed me other YouTubers' guides. Didn't ask for them. Don't want to see them. So don't send me anything like that. I'm not asking for anything. I asked those not to send them. I didn't know what they were until I opened one of them. So anyway, I don't like to get in anybody else's business. The point is, though, that mine's going to be something totally a different line, uh, a different way. So those in Patreon, I hope to have the first grouping up. It's going to be quite a few of them. You're, you're talking a lot of information in Microsoft Word, it's going to take up, I don't know, maybe 70 pages or more, I would gather. A um, lot of photos, though, so it's going to be a visual guide more than anything else. So FYI. Back to the questions here. Jason, welcome, welcome. Hey, Steve, how are you doing? Good evening to you. Marky, as I said, she's been on and off sick, um, and my youngest is still recovering. She's actually helping him with something for school right this minute. So um, if she gets done, she will come down, um, but um, he's got some stuff he's working on. He's got an honors class, and he's got something that they got coming up for a project. Hey, Tara, how are you doing? Messed up my days. I do that quite a bit. I'm glad the kids are in school only for the sake of knowing what day of the week it is sometimes. They kind of fade into each other when you, you work like this. You know, I don't have to be anywhere specific, so my usual Monday at work day, you know, driving somewhere is gone. I, I have to rely on other factors sometimes. I'm not a big, I don't follow the holiday that's coming up and stuff like that, too. I only pay, keep it on my calendar for business reasons. Uh, let's see here. Lisa, how are you doing? Yeah, the video on the other channel, um, I've got a, another one that's going to actually be uh, almost an hour, and it's going to discuss how to do that for you starting off. I've got uh, segments as well showing the, the tools used and, you know, the whole works like that, you know. So you'll be able to actually, you know, kind of step in on it too. There's shortcuts and things like that. So uh, Hauptman, Delta Flight Museum in Atlanta just bought uh, old airline paper from me on eBay. Got a ton of it from a storage unit Monday. Yeah, I do sell to a lot of museums, and it's because of what we sell. I sell a ton, to, and I'm not going to holler out uh, the universities that I deal with just because one of the professors does books, and I don't want anybody, you know, I don't I don't want to holler out any of my clients, but let's just say that I sell to some, some well-known people, including some professionals who have multiple books out. Um, on topics of, of uh, historical items and stuff like that. I sell to movie theaters, you know, the movie companies, um, for props even occasionally for the arts. I've sold to famous people. Um, you know, it, you'll, you'll do that. That's going to happen if you sell the right types of items. Used clothing, you're not going to have that happen to. No ding on used clothing because we did it for quite a few years. We did give it up and are done with clothing. Um, I might um, put up a video on some clothing. I got a lot of nice clothing here. We just pulled out a couple more totes and I didn't realize I still had some. I may sell it literally dollar for dollar at cost if anybody might be interested in it. There's some real nice leather coats that 
if you market them right, could go for, you know, a lot of money out. And, you know, I just literally want to get my money back and just be done with them plus shipping. But I may do that if, if anybody's interested. Um, and just one more thing. Again, as I said, the the artwork in that in the art professor video is for sale it's there's a link to it down below in the comment section for somebody if they're interested i do get a lot of people asking on that most of the time i don't sell any of the originals if i like the artwork and stuff but this one i just decided i've done so many eyes for people in the past it's up for sale it's a bin just like i always do it's active right this moment it's the exact piece done in that video for anybody who's interested uh Name of the other channel is The Art Professor, and there is a link I just bopped. It's in the description. It's in the comment section. And if you are on my channel, main channel page, it says uh, um, friends of this channel. I've got it in there as well, too, as well as other channels that I you know, converse with on a fairly routine basis as well. Dixie Girl, while well, thank you on the haircut, I've got a ton of comments on that. I was kind of surprised because for me it was just a haircut. Um... I had hair down in my waist for probably 20% of my life, maybe a little longer than that. I've had it short as a business professional with a very short spike. I used to get a, a number two, if the guys probably know what a number two is, on the shaver, and that's usually what I did on the top, and then it was a number one on the sides when I was a regional. So I've done the gambit. Uh, nowadays, I just am lazy, and, and I'll try to do better on the haircuts, but it's just a matter of wa not wanting to take the time to go down and get a haircut. I mean, that's bad, but I'm not a, um, a fashion guru, and, and you know I'm not trying to impress anybody with my looks or anything like that. I do like the new haircut, so um, it's going to stay for a while. Maybe I'll, uh, I do have some contract deals, and um, as I said, we do go around to local businesses and do sell material wholesale wise or in lots and try to get new clients for some of our art lines and stuff like that so um and plus as i said I, we're going to be going down to museums for the other channel you're going to see some uh, metal casting of jewelry custom jewelry from start to finish um in vacuum systems really nice high quality stuff you're going to get to see um glass blowing things like that too so i want to look look the part i don't you know anyway enough on the haircut um, I'm just was overwhelmed. I got like close to a hundred comments or emails or texts about the hair, which was just kind of surprising, you know. Um, I, did, I didn't know what to what to say about it to most people who asked because it just kind of floored me. I wasn't wasn't expecting anything like that. Wasn't my intended, um, you know. I'm glad everybody likes it. Uh, ever mess with beer keg? Yeah, beer keg taps all the time. I worked at that Applebee's, so all the time when we exchanged them, I always took them home and stuff. And usually the beer guys would give me the old ones they had, or I'd, I'd give them some money because most of the time they could take them home. And Brown Bottling in uh, Meridian, the, the guys there usually gave me their stuff all the time. At one time, we had like 95 uh, beer keg taps. Vintage are the best. The chrome ones, the chrome base on the bottom are the, are the best ones, at least in my book. The 50s are usually the best ones I, uh, I get. Um, even like um, uh, fountain soda heads and things like that, fancier ones of those can go well. We've had an entire setup from a Coke one from like 1910 or 20 once or twice before. They go for like 1000 if you've got all the porcelain bins, pumps, all that kind of stuff. So if you get the right stuff, they go for some good money. But taps for beer in general go very well. Um, I always mess with that kind of stuff when I run up on them. Opportunity to hit a local live auction in the area next week that has about 50 of them. If they're individually priced, I probably wouldn't mess with them. If you can buy them in bulk quantity, I would. I don't spend more than, say, three to five bucks a piece on most of those keg taps, and I look them up, the ones I don't know. There's there's a bunch of them that I do know just because I've sold them sold them many times. All the ones that, that the bottling company that I dealt with um, literally would um, give me them, I know those those by heart. And occasionally I'll run into them at a thrift store or at a local live auction just like that. Or a picker will walk up on a handful of them and stuff. An ex-employee from a, a brewery might have had some in his garage or something like that. They do sell. Some of them go for like four or $500. You get the right one and it's old enough. Average one, maybe 30 bucks. You know, That's why I say 5 bucks is about the max. It's going to sit there if it's not a hard-to-find one on that car. I'll you can look up comps. You'll see a ton of them up there. Barware, I love barware. You'll see, I, I think I actually have a barware section in my store, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I don't list a lot of my own items. We have employees, so I don't remember, but I'm almost sure I have a barware. In fact, again, I've worked at a bar for a long time, so you know we have our own barware from working out there. 
one Lou, which I've talked about in videos, my one of my bosses, my best boss in my entire life, my my mentor for a long time. When we left, I bought him barware equipment. I bought him a a booze hound, and it had um, it's it was like a basset hound that was a decanter, and it came with a set of drinks and a whole display thing. We bought him something really nice when we left because he has a bar in his house and stuff. His Nate, well, I don't want to shout out that, but um, his neighbor is a very famous. Um, Two doors down from his house is a very famous uh, Star Wars cast member from the original Star Wars, um, you know. And I've talked to him on the phone once before because of that, so it was kind of interesting. But uh, he lives in West Palm area, and it's um, two doors down is a very famous Star Wars actor. So anyway, just one of those claims on hi on him. Um, but Carl, hopefully that gives you. A, they do sell again vintage individual ones. I don't mess with unless they're a couple dollars. But at a live auction, I bet you you won't get them that. If they're a big lot, different story. Uh, are you a collector? Good afternoon. Welcome back. Well, thank you. I'm still still work in progress. I missed. I didn't have the lighting quite dark enough. I didn't lock in the um, the focus. You got to turn off out of focus, and I didn't think about that. So there are some some little click things that I'll fix up on the next one here. It's not quite as clear as I wanted because of that. But uh, let's see here. Fativor Lifestyles, good evening. Midwest Picker, welcome, welcome. Hey, Annie, how are you doing? Hopefully you are doing well, Annie. My feed's frozen. Hang on just a second here. Oh, now it just bopped, and now i got to find where I was at. Hang on just a second. My feed just disappeared. Uh, let's see here. What am I going to be for Halloween? Now, well, that's going to be a surprise. Um, I may wear one that I've had again, but I won't be Gene Simmons. I will tell you that. If you don't, I I love the the cosplay. Um, our dream thing is to get to um, Comic Con and Dragon Con um, and have a table there as a vendor. Is my 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 one of my goals for the art business of ours. Uh, literally would be to be displaying this year. I hope to get to and display at the Makers Fair either at um, Greenfield Village in Detroit area or to the Detroit Comic Con. Um, one of those two we're hoping to have a table at the next show that we can get into. So FYI. Um, and if I do that, I'll do some video on there as well too. But it'll be a surprise. Usually we do stuff for the family that we can all dress up as the same thing. So just FYI. There's four members of KISS. We were four Tuscan Raiders one year. Um, we've been four other Star Wars characters. Uh, we we were the, the Droogs from um, A Clockwork Orange. I almost thought about wearing that again because I don't think anybody's seen that. It's not much to the costume is the only thing, but I do shave this off for that usually. I own, we put together costumes, so I use the same ones when we go to some shows and things like that too. If we go to a comic thing, I'll usually dress up um, with the stick and the whole works, the walking cane for um, the main character. Uh, Carl, love the Gene Simmons. Yeah, I think I caught a lot of people off guard um, dressing up as Gene Simmons because I go all out. If you didn't see it, go back to October and take a look because I put on the face makeup. I literally have a professionally produced Gene Simmons costume with the wings, the rivets, and all the leather gear and the whole works. Um, it's it's the same basic thing. I think it's the the Love Gun version. If uh, you're familiar with Kiss and Gene Simmons, we've met them. I met them in person um, outside of their hotel once. We went after a concert. Somebody told us where they were staying. We waited outside. I was young. I was 17. So it was an interesting experience. You know, they talked with us and stuff. And it was it was they were just like normal people, which was really weird because that was like one of the first ones. I used to do a lot with um, an exhibitioner here in town, and I've you know sat down and ate dinner with David Lee Roth once in my life in Detroit Airport, um, and then um, I knew David Coverdale from uh, White Snake somewhat, not like personally known, but I got backstage and we talked on several different concerts. So, you know, it was interesting, all because of a boss of mine who was an exhibitioner. He was the guy that booked in the performers in the town and, and stuff so and we got to do other things like see movies before the titles were out like a uh, space balls we got to see when it wasn't titled and scenes weren't in the movie and there were other scenes that never made it in the movie and things like that too you bid on a movie back in the day you'd you'd sh they'd show a preview for all the exhibitioners each each chain of movie theaters would have a different person in charge and then you'd go and get to watch some of the movies before they came out 
you know, months sometimes before they came out. It was like a pre-screening, and it would be one specific region. All these people would come from like a hundred mile area or more sometimes. And uh, my boss brought some of the employees, and I got to go many times. But that was always interesting, as you got to really see. And Spaceballs was the the first one I got to do that with, and it was pretty fun. I mean, you know, we were allowed to drink beforehand, and it was a good old time. You know, drinking age was was eighteen at the time. So anyway, I wasn't old enough to drink, but you know, we won't go there with that. So yeah, Carl, guide is coming. It's going to be pieces and pieces, so it's going to take a little bit of time. I, it's it's. I thought it would just be simpleton and let's put it together and boom, 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 because I've seen some of what other people do. And I, I, I got to do it meth uh, methodically like I would for a college paper. It's going to be just plain text, but I want to have all the information in there. So you have the, the what, where, why, and how on the discs and stuff. So it's going to talk about age, why it's this, why it's that, the terms on the disc, what this means, what the colors on them mean. Um, it's going to show you multiple different versions of them so you know, you know, right off the bat, yeah, look at this one, don't look at this one, and things along that line. So I, I'm trying to do it by what I learned and how I learned, and I'm going to hopefully cut off some of that time frame for you. As I've said, it's it's going to be available to anybody in the, the 999 Patreon level with the videos. The videos won't stop. I've still got another video coming out probably tomorrow. So I said I wouldn't I'd be slowing down in the videos just this week, but I'm just going to do the same amount of videos, and I'm going to piece out the, the, um, the guide because that way, as soon as I get part of it done, I'll set out that part. So when in the next week comes out, it'll be a, a, the entire guide again. So you'll have the original one from the first week and then more to it, so you won't have to worry about anything too so and it's going to be copyrighted i don't want anybody passing it around or anything like that but um, i'm still looking into that aspect of it so anyway yeah i got you with the two there uh, let's see here i have noticed the market has recently changed in products that are hot what's everyone hot market paper wise is always hot so i don't have the same issues as as other folks vintage sells well and records always sell well throughout the year there's no time frame for what we sell a lot of the, the stuff I see going is, you know, your seasonal merchandise are changing for those selling clothing and news and things along that line. Video game purchases should go back up again, things along that line. You should have been slow the beginning of this week and the beginning of last week as well. You should have slow sales for this two-week two, two week time frame. And I went back for eight years. I keep track of my sales for the last eight years. Literally, these first two weeks back to school, people should have lost some sales if you're selling the normal stuff. So if... Then I did see a lot of people saying, I only sold this, didn't have any sales, didn't this, two sales, three sales, whatever the case may be. Next week, things should be back to a normal swing if, if you had a hit. I didn't get a hit like that. so. But again, I, I don't sell the same things. For me, my, my time picks up right now already because professors and businesses are back in play right now. So, you know, purchases are, are going up already, you know. I, I've been fourth quarter through the whole summer, basically. Um, we're expecting to do some monster numbers, something I have never would have physically thought possible in this year is going to hit by the end of the year. Christmas time should just be rolling. I'm not trying to brag. It's just the way it is. So we've had a lot of growing pains for us. So, again, there's there's... It's not all fun and games making a lot of money. It's a lot of hard work, and sometimes, um, like we're just taking off tomorrow. I'm, I'm tomorrow evening. I just, I need some time off. You get a little frazzled. I, things have been going so great, and and I might, you know, my foot's been floored. I got the, the, you know, the pedal to the metal, so to speak, with the business, and it's just, it's just, it's, it's, it's like a train running off the tracks almost. It's just, it's going full speed, and you know, I'm just gonna take a, a step off for tomorrow night, and we're gonna go out and. Maybe go to a jazz club or hit the mall, buy some, get a few new shirts or something too, something like that. So dinner, of course, you know, just me and the wife out too. So it'll be a nice, nice time. Aaron Baker, welcome. You probably answered this pretty, but what are your thoughts on free returns? I've had free returns since it was offered. So I, I would 100% always do free returns. Um, and I do 30-day free returns as well. How many, how many returned items do, have I had in the last... Uh, five months, one. One that I had to take back. One was a BS one, and eBay sided with me, and I didn't even have to deal with it. The other one was a record that the person just wasn't happy with it. They paid the, the return shipping technically. Or I'm sorry, I paid the return shipping, but I did not refund them the initial shipping, which you do not have to do on that type of thing. So basically, I'm just out a few bucks in shipping. So no big deal. The item's already since sold a second time around, so... 
you know, how can I go wrong with that, honestly? I don't really worry about returns at all. Collectibles, you just don't get returns on collectibles. It, it just doesn't happen. I'm not saying it can't happen, but it, it's so rare and, and far between. You know, and again, it's, if they open it up a return, as soon as they open up the return, they can't leave you bad feedback no matter what. So, you know, it's worth the, the sacrificing the four bucks or whatever I'm going to lose on shipping on that item to make sure that all my my listings I'm not going to have these any negative feedbacks coming in it's just another plus for me and on top of that with top rated seller plus at the end of the year I'm saving almost three thousand dollars off just this store from my discount I know it may not sound like a, a lot on final value fees a 10 percent discount but it's thousands at the end of the year when you add up all those pennies pennies and dimes add up for those who don't know that that's why I'm cheap because I save so many thousands of dollars with having a second anchor store I save thousands with doing this feature it's thousands with doing that feature I save money by buying boxes in bulk I go straight to box manufacturers, all that kind of stuff. I don't buy many boxes from Walmart anymore, except when the box manufacturer doesn't have them or I'm really lazy and don't feel like driving out. Walmart, though, isn't very much. It's only a few cents more than the box manufacturer, in all honesty. So, you know, free returns should be a done deal to anybody. It's the way of the world, in my, my opinion. Um, I have never lost sales. I have not had any issues. It's a cost of doing business. The four bucks I'm going to lose for the last five months of total returns is nothing. And again, it's already sold for the same amount the first time I sold it. I just sold it to, to somebody else who was watching it. So made him the same offer that this gentleman had. So no big deal. Hard to go back to a hour per uh, dollar per hour job when you make hundreds per hour listing. That is that is true. I don't know how I would be able to even handle a job like that anymore. I'm spoiled. Um, if I had to deal with working in, in restaurants like that, I, I, I could see why someone would chop off a toe or shoot themselves in the foot to get out of working. those Because they're mind-numbing. You get no respect from anybody above you. You're just a number. All they want is the dollar amount, your the money, the return from your investment of time. They don't care about you. They don't care about anything else. You're just a number for the most part. Now, it's not that way with every company because Lou, my boss, was not that way. He gave up his, his anniversary. I think it was like his 25th anniversary with his wife to come and help me and my wife out when we we, um, we lost a child between, between the two we have. Um, it, she had to deliver a stillborn it was it was bad experience anyway long story short um and he literally instantly dropped everything he was doing and he was sitting in my facility said take all the time i mean the guy was just a bomb he, he came in and did everything i needed to told me to take my time and, and do what you got to do and it was just it's, it's the best person i've ever worked for ever in my life was this guy named lou so i wished everybody could have a lou my wife loved him everybody in my family did um just the bomb he's, he's still around still a good guy still doing his own thing he owns his own business now too mind you uh, let's pop down here. Yeah, you can go back and look at the Gene Simmons. It's up there. I, I don't take anything down. Rosina, how are you doing? Well, thank you as well for the support. Debbie Does Sales, how are you doing? How are you doing? I meant to click on and send you a hi on on Scott's channel, but I kept I was wasn't like totally concentrating on the channel. I was listening in the background while I was packing up. Can anyone recommend any bookkeeping software? We do our own with accountants here, but um, GoDaddy is the only one that I know people who do and never had an issue with it. So, And GoDaddy bought out Cellbrite, which is a platform that I use. And again, no issues that I can possibly see. So GoDaddy is the only one that I, I would recommend by you know people that I know. I haven't used it myself, though, so I can't personally say it's good. Yeah, Annie's suggesting one, too, that she uses. Um, I don't know Wave. I don't like to share too much personal stuff. I'm the old Excel everything and accountant. Um, I took accounting classes, so you know I know what's what on that at least. QuickBooks Inuit or my accountant. Yeah, um, accountant is what, what I use. That's my that's my best bet. What are your sales? How are you doing there? Hey, Duncan. How's Duncan today? Again, I got some stamps we'll be touching off, too. It'll keep cold, wet, say here, but killing it on eBay sales. I can't complain about eBay sales at all. I have no complaints on eBay whatsoever. 
Uh, Charles, how you doing, Charles? Hope it's going very well for you. Again, I'm, I'm going to try to get on tonight, too, but my day has been, on my eyes, I'm dragging. I probably got circles under my eyes today. Um, it's just been a real long week with folks sick and all, but. Yeah, it's going to be a big monster guide. Um, I'm still trying to figure out, um, Disney Family 515, how to break that down into a phone app. Because I put one page in a phone app from there, and it's like six or eight pages, and it's just is not practical to see it. I'm not a whiz on on apps apps either or transferring it to that. It's I don't know if it's going to be practical. If I can figure out how to get a keyword search built into it, um, I will do that. I know on on Word it's no big deal. You can just type in it on Word. That's the only reason I'm I put it together originally in Word. Um, again, it's just me taking a little time to dig into it and stuff. But I will have a a Word version text document up um, hopefully tomorrow, but it might be Saturday. Again, I've been really swamped with stuff and it's just been me doing a lot of this stuff because the wife was sick so and in fact she's up there helping the one kid right my youngest hey karen how are you doing we've chatted a couple times now back and forth in other people's channels now i truly look forward to mondays now that i've gone full time Depends on what your Monday is. For me, when I used to work for somebody, Mondays was it could be any day of the week. In all honesty, um, I work the weekend, so I don't I don't have days off like most people. But again, it's it's easy work. I can come and go anytime, any place I want. So I'll do a couple hours. I'll decide, hey, I want to go sit out back for a few minutes, or go on the deck and watch the birds and squirrels, or whatever I want to do, or go to the store, or go get something to eat. I do that, and then I come back and do something else. You know, employees are still here working. You know, and if they needed to get some time off or switch hours or whatever they're doing, no big deal. Yes, the Christmas ornament will be on there. In fact, it's going to be, I'm probably going to have like um, either one longer video with like four different types of them to do with like 15 minute segments or I'll do 15 minute segments, four different ones because um, uh, there's, there's different lines of them and I'm going to show you how to get the vintage material to make them and it's, it's going to be more, it's going to be a little bit um, involved but it's it's easy stuff it's really easy stuff there's a few processes and steps but it's all stuff that that people can do and recreate these they're going to look like the vintage the real deals from the vintage days victorian and stuff too so and i'm going to show you ones that have sold as well i think in there so you'll get a comparison so something that anybody can do and again i did I, i've had some videos shot for a little while i have to shoot a new header just to change it up with the title and all but I don't want to muddy the waters on the channel. I want to keep this to making money specifically on eBay, um, on reselling, not creating as much. Because again, everybody here isn't a creator, and I don't want to be, um, you know, putting out content that's just not going to be, you know, useful to other people. So, and again, I'm not going to be making any money on the channel. It takes a long time to get anywhere, and if I don't get in here that way, that's fine because I love doing the art. I'm filming on stuff that I would be doing anyway, so it's just an extra extra thing to do. Uh, let's see here. I'm selling uh, to several important people, professors, doctors, and British lords, if you have the right. Yeah, the right item. I, I'm, I'm telling you, that's I sell to a lot of professors, and I do mean a lot. Um, adjunct, um, not so many, but mostly um, tenured professors who have books out. Those are a lot of the people that I sell some of the interesting and high-dollar paper items to. There's a museum in Japan that's been buying a lot of them. A lot of my China material is going to somebody who does have uh, the the Chinese national some Chinese national something. It's a um, some kind of um, cultural studies thing in in China, and I don't remember the name on it, but it's the same ones bought for me many times. They spend a lot of money, and I'm talking a lot of money. And I do sell to a, a dentist thing, to a dentist uh, museum. There's other ones, too. Historical societies I sell to a lot. Uh, genealogists I sell to, too. Um, things along that line, too. Anywhere like that does very well. Yes, that is my area, Samuel. That is exactly uh, the area I'm in. I was born and raised in Toledo, but I've been all over the country um, many years of my life. Uh, my feed is gone. Hang on, let me see if I can get my feed. Okay, now it's back. Let me see if I can find out where we're at. Hang on, I do apologize. 
As I said, my feed bounces all over the place. You deal a lot in documents. Would you care to give advice on the best place to source? Um, paper in general, I deal in. Um, I kind of, there was somebody probably f when eBay started going to the, the, um, the new payment system with how many uh, fees and all the stuff and they did the, uh, the anchor store and all, one of the guys I used to follow was like the, the paper king. He had over 100,000 pieces of paper. And that had been my goal for a while. Now I have over 100,000. Well, we've got like probably a million pieces of paper that we could literally sell that hold value now in stock. I've moved beyond that and, and we're going to our own site as our own our own technical goal to have a paper grounded site is, is our goal, our store. I sell paper of any kind. I don't care what it is, documents or not. Source-wise, I have pickers, local live auctions, estate sales. Um, those are literally the, the best places to get them. Before I went into big mass quantity, we sourced at antique malls especially. I could, even right now, I could walk through any, you can give me an antique mall. As long as it's big enough, I'm going to walk out of there with some paper that I can make some good money in. I mean, I've, I have never been skunked in one of these big antique paper malls. And if you haven't seen the channel, just watch some of the video hauls from just a couple weeks ago. Um, the last one, I think, the last one I showed you when I was in, well, maybe it wasn't the last one, but one of them, I'm showing you some postcards in, in a car. Now we're up to over $700 profit from postcards I, I physically purchased at an antique mall for a dollar a piece. And it's one that's been there forever. I've even looked through the same place before. Every time I go in there, we make hundreds of dollars. There's a little gnat in here. I make hundreds of dollars from these places. There, there isn't an antique mall that, that I can't make or find something at these days. Because the, the point is that, that at an antique mall, dealers only know certain things. If you're an antique mall, chances are you know bigger stuff. Glass, pottery knickknacks, display items, furniture, stuff like that. Stuff that's in person, like cabinets and things like that. You don't know records. You don't know postcards. You don't know vintage photographs and things like that. Now, there'll be booths in an antique mall that'll just sell photos and books and paper items and things like that, but that's a different story. I Obviously, I still can source and find some items in there because even when it's a paper dealer that just deals in paper or postcards or forms or documents... They still only know certain areas in those. Like um, a postal person, a guy who does like Duncan here. Like if, if we're talking to Duncan and does a lot more stamps and stuff than I do, he may not know his postcards. He may not know the best postcards to get. So, But he's going to get postcards because they show up in postal cover collections quite often. So is he going to price those right? No. You know, it's just like sometimes you can do do okay at some postcard shows, but around here I can't. Some of the the... the uh, uh, philatelic shows around here I can score postcards at because again those guys know stamps they're not as up on the postcards to them it's a cover it might be bought because of the cancellation on it and to them the cancellation is worth eight bucks you turn it over the postcard could be worth 200 let, let me just let me show you in fact this is leading into to what I was talking about now this was a half off booth now there's let me make sure you can see this the price of the thing was two dollars, half off. I paid a dollar as I always do. It's an ugly, and I'm sorry about the green on there, but it's an ugly card. I look at the backs on cards sometimes too. Sometimes I'll just scan through the backs if it's not a lot of them. Luckily, I did on this one here because the front of this one I would have instantly passed on. The back now is a different story. Now I've just talked about Palmer Cox in my video for Christmas ornaments. That is a brownie right there. This instantly makes this card worth at least 25 or 30 bucks. Guaranteed. I'm probably going to put 75 bucks on here because it's a toy store. It's a toy store. This is 1910. This is a dollar card. I will probably get at least 50 bucks for this card. No lie. And this is from a mall. This is literally what I do. So, and I was going to pick something up from somebody who was there. I'm buying something from a, another person that I deal with. It's not technically a picker, but it's somebody that's an acquaintance. So I checked out a couple booths. There's, I know where the booths are. Again, I keep notes. I know which, which malls have which booths, where the booth is at. If I got to get a map from the, 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 the antique mall, usually you can get a map from the antique malls, and they'll, it'll show the layout of the store for you if you don't know that. So this is one of the purchases I got for a dollar. You can't go wrong on this. It's Toyland. It's Buffalo, New York. It's a main place. It's got a poem on the back for Christmas, for crying out loud. I mean, 
It's got a brownie in the back. It's ugly on the front, but it's the back that's important. Don't always consider uh, the design on the front. Um, I mean, uh, the postmarks and stamps usually don't carry a value, so don't waste your time too much on those. I have sold some for 20 30 bucks because of a postcard. I've now had two or three of the Marshall Plan uh, cancellations, and those are like 25 or 30 bucks. Now, another one that showed up in that same one, and this one says three on it, but I paid a dollar for it, believe it or not. Um, I thought for sure this is a postcard. I was going to think about it at a dollar, turn it over to verify the price, and it's a promotional map of it, so this is even better than a postcard. This is a tourist item. It's got a map. Probably worth twice what it would be. It's San Antonio, so it's not a big place, but it's advertising the hotel with a map on the back. So for a dollar, I'll take it. 10, 15 bucks easy. So it's just an example. And for those who like paper, if you don't know paper, there is a crossover point when postcards came about. They started with trade cards. And from trade cards, some of the artwork you'll find on trade cards, Victorian trade cards, turned into postcards. That's the early example right here is another example of what I'm talking about. Again, I do apologize for the green on there. I didn't even think about that. But it's a advertisement for baby's own soap. And I've got two of them. These are like Victorian advertising. I'll get 15 bucks a piece. I paid a dollar for them. I've got two of them. That's 30 bucks. So... It's easy for me to walk into a store and be able to do this because people don't look for stuff like that. They're not going to think that that's a brownie. Most people don't even know what a brownie is, for crying out loud, which I'm surprised. Palmer Cox. Anybody who wants to learn something today, go look up Palmer Cox. And I'm going to type that in here because if you don't know who Palmer Cox is, open up a web browser and look up Palmer Cox and look up brownies. I assure you that is something that I make a lot of money on. If you look in my hauls, I sold a button for 50 bucks. I've sold cards for 40, 50 bucks. This postcard here is going to be 50 bucks because of that brownie. One little illustration on the back of that card makes that card worth 50 bucks. No lie. Look it up yourself. Hey, Chris, how are you doing? Thrift Shop Hustler in the house tonight. Thank you for the hair as well. It's a long time coming, huh, Chris? No more all long hair, I guess, for me. Check out Chris, too. Uh, we do stuff together. We are getting ready to have another show. It's going to be on Dom, Primetime Treasure Hunters channel. It's going to be me, Chris, and Dom together. I'm um, not sure on a topic or a date yet, but we will shout that out to you as it gets closer. I'll push out some pushes for you as well on all the platforms just so you can keep track of what's going on and uh, you won't miss the show. Last one, we had a ton of people on. Um, it was a really good show. A lot of questions, a lot of comments, a lot of discussion. Great show on Chris's channel. Uh, let me see here. Bob, Bob Grant, welcome. Glad to have you. Hey, Rick, how are you doing? Christmas ornaments on the Art Professor. That would be a cool idea, Charles. Yeah, I've already got the videos done, Rick, on that. Um, I literally was going to put them on this channel like, I don't know, Charles, what's it been, two months maybe? Um, Charles might know better on the date, not how long ago. I got maybe nine videos that are already done, that I've had done for a long time. You'll do a video sometimes, or at least I do, and then I don't like it. That ADD kicks in or OCD, and it, it's not the way I want it when I'm done, and I, or I'm aggravated about a, the sound or the music or something, and it drives me nuts. I can't kick that habit. It's, it's a force of habit anyway. Let's check the time. I've totally not paid attention. Plenty of time. Uh, let me see here. We now have a real hurricane. We'll, we'll sell you. Actually, it's free and free shipping. It's heading for your country right now mysterious powerful rare things yeah i've been through a few not fun at all nuke it mysteriously yeah you can't nuke a hurricane dressed up as a WAP and ss tank officer several years ago had the full reenactor uniform and knight's cross medal got lots of looks from people i would imagine so i would say um just because someone does that doesn't mean they are a racist or anything like that. So just to put that out there, I get strange comments on stuff that we purchase and things as well. There is a historical factor in everything, and um, like stamp collectors. You can sell Nazi stamps, German stamps from World War II online legally, no problem on eBay or any other platform as well as coins, as well as postcards too, but... It's a historical thing. It's a monetary thing. It's not. 
It's just like someone dressing up as a Confederate soldier for something, you know? It, it's not anything like that. I, I, as you saw, went to a military show. There was that exact uniform he is talking about at that show. There was also a a German machine gun there that was just incredible. Um, wish I would have got a picture, better picture of that. You did see the American machine gun, I think, in there, but I like stuff like that. It holds a historical value, and I'm not that type of person to hold anything against anybody for any reason. My family was, you know, um, outsiders in this country when we came here from Germany ourselves. So I have German ancestry. We had people there. We have people that were killed in Germany during World War II. We had some forced labor family members and stuff. So, you know, um, I still have a place to stay if technically I want to go to Germany and stay somewhere for free, if, if that gives you any idea. It's just how it is, you know, so... That's a cool outfit, though. It's the, the only thing I can say, not to glorify anybody, but some of the outfits I like, military in general, some of the outfits look nice. I'm not saying any specific ones. There's a lot of nice uniforms out there. I love some of the earlier um, Marines. A U.S. Marine uniform from about 1903 is a really nice-looking thing. I've had one once, and it was just something I wished I would have kept, honestly. Dressed up as a naked guy once and got arrested. I would hope so on that one there. Hopefully there wasn't any kids present. That outfit is banned in most states, I found out. There is, there, in Florida, for those who live in Florida, there used to be a beach called Play Linda, and it was a nudist beach. I don't think it was technically a nudist beach, but everybody went nude there, and no one usually busted down on them. Yeah, Land O'Lakes. When I worked at a... I worked for um, a resort on 192 West, and my boss was a nudist at that resort. She showed us pictures of the inside of the place and stuff. And she worked at the bar at that resort on top of it. Um, you know, she invited us. I wasn't going to go. It wasn't my thing. Weirdest thing at one of those places, you don't wear any clothes, but when you go to dance, you have to put something on because you can't make contact on the dance floor when you're, when you're nude. That's a, that's a safety code with the, the, county, the county code. That's a true thing. We talked to her a lot about it, too. Uh, I did live and work in Florida for quite some time. Hang on, my feed's just bounced. You're banned in Florida. Hopefully that's not a true story now. Does that have something to do with the, the, the mouse? Yeah, I'm already going to put the uh, the copyright symbol. Yeah, I know. Technically it is, but um, I wanted to get the ISBN, and we're going to tie it in with something else. The guide will be available for purchase outside of Patreon, but you do far much better just getting the Patreon. But anyway. Kiss Me Florida. Yep, that is it. There used to be a flea market in St. Cloud we used to go to, too, that was pretty good. Speak of the devil. There's Dom on there. How you doing, Primetime Treasure Hunter? Dom in the house as well. So we got Dom and Chris both in the house today. How are you doing? Yeah, he had a... He had um. Oh, geez. Now I'm terrible on... um. And who we had on the other day. Oh, jeez. Somebody who's been on our live chat once or twice. I can't remember the name. But anyway, I was on with his chat uh, while we were doing something as well, too. Usually, if I'm lucky and I'm doing something here in-house in the evening, I'll usually try and have something on in the background to listen to as well, too. And lately, it's been other people's channels. Thanks as well, Ayani. If you're talking more about keeping it from being bootleg you can pass or protect a pdf yeah i looked into that too i've passworded some in the past too yeah i do have adobe or acrobat um i think it is the pro version too i know we paid for one how can you hold or hide your sold listings on ebay mark if you go into site settings there's one where you can click and it's usually i think it's at the top too and i don't have it handy here to show you but i do show it in one of the patreon videos if you go up and click where you um keep the listing running when it's hits zero quantity it will basically keep the listing up as a live active listing and it will never go into the solds and then all you got to do is delete the listing after you've sold it because it's still active once it's deleted it doesn't show up in ended listings anymore so you can hide them that was a feature of uh, ebay did for those wholesalers who don't want competition knowing what they're selling or things along that line it does work though just fyi Uh, let's see here. Uh, 
I have five returns an hour and I'm not bragging. That would be pretty awful if that's really what you got, Chris. Can I define pickers, Frank? A picker is a person who calls me with stuff that they've picked up at sourcing locations and then I go to that person's place or they'll meet me somewhere or they'll come to my house with the items. Usually I go there though and I'll purchase them straight from them. Usually they're people who set up and sell locally who do not do the internet. Um, older time folks usually they're people that set up at flea markets and stuff like that. They will call me. Um, the, the the plus for a picker, it's somebody who doesn't want to do eBay, and it's somebody who, this is a revenue source for these folks. They'll call me, and I'll give them cash when they call me, and I go there. So they don't have to wait to sell something. They don't have to wait till a flea market is open. Most flea marketers only go to a flea market once a week. Sometimes they're people who do full-time jobs on the side and do the flea market flipping as on top of it. It'd be items that they would sell at the flea market had they not called me first, but I get first dibs on it, on the items they call me for. Some of my pickers pick for other people, not just me. Um, one of the guys that, that I get stuff from only picks up records just for me, and uh, I look at all those first. Other things I never get to even see that he gets. Um, all the tools go to somebody else. I don't even have a say. Don't pry. That's just the way the arrangements we have. Um, I have eight pickers. I've went back up and down between eight and nine um, people that call me. They don't call me every week. They don't call me uh, one, maybe calls me only once a month. It just depends on what they have, what they get, what they're sourcing at any given time. It took three years or more to get, well, it's almost five years to get nine, but we got several after three or four years. So it's just people you run into. Uh, I got one return in years because buyers didn't know what he bought otherwise. But yeah, it's usually something really simple and stupid. And with eBay switching it around, when you go to return, I think one of the first items is I just don't like it. So you have to scroll down to another page just to see something wrong as the option to return. So And once they return or open up a return, they can't change it at all. So if they realize, hey, I'm going to have to pay for return shipping, they can't go back in and change it anymore. They're stuck with that option. So in some cases, depending on what they put in there, they could, even though I have free returns, still technically end up being forced to pay for return shipping, depending on the option that they use, too. So just keep that in mind. I never have returns, so I don't really worry about that. It's such a, it's nothing. It's, it's, a, it's a joke if, if you're talking about returns. I don't sell clothing. I don't sell the stuff that most people return. I don't mess with high-end electronics. Paper is a different story, and I send it all insured. The only times I've ever had an issue with something getting damaged or lost in the mail, the last one was through the Global Shipping Program, and if it gets lost after eBay receives it, I don't care where it's lost at. If, as soon as it hits eBay's facility and they said it's there, anything happens to that item, eBay refunds you 100%. All of the money gets back to you, including the original shipping, if they get the item damaged. If it's damaged when it's set uh, in Germany or wherever the item goes to, eBay still covers your losses on those items. So, you know, that's part of the plus on free returns and global shipping and all those other aspects. Uh, if you haven't hit the like button, pop on the like button. We've got 120-some-odd uh, people live right now uh, and only 44 likes. If you don't like it, hopefully you do like the content. I'm giving you serious, honest conversation here. I'm not going to feed you a bunch of BS for anything else, but uh, this is the truth and the real game here we're talking about. Let's see here. Um, Mark, have you ever heard anything about new Amazon program? No extra cost that automates your pricing based on the logarithm. There's repricers. There's tons of repricers. What you're talking about is a repricer. Um, I don't know. Maybe that option's available on, on some of Amazon. Now, I would never do that at all. I price mine individually, and I don't change prices based on what the market states. I will let the other people run out of merchandise, and mine will end up selling anyway. I'm not in a hurry to sell something on Amazon. It doesn't matter whether it's long, short, fast, whatever. It doesn't matter to me at all. I'm going to sell it at some point. Who cares if it sells today or tomorrow? I am never going to race to the bottom. If you see my pricing scheme on eBay, I'm higher than most everybody else. I sell routinely a large majority, and I'm saying a majority of everything I sell, I sell more than most people do because I don't care if it takes a while to sell it. You're going to find somebody who's going to buy it at a certain price. If you're patient and you have the money, you know, if you've got an income coming in, if you're new, you can't do that. You know, but again, it's taken us years to get to this point. 
You know, this is my full-time job. I don't do anything else other than this. This is what I've done for eight plus years. This is all I have done. So we've honed our skills. We found every little niche or crevice that we can squeeze another dime into profits anywhere, doing anything that we can. And every day, if we learn something else, we add something new into it. Last week, as I said, we hit a goal. We added some new stuff into it. I may be breaking down some really interesting things that most people aren't aware of, but that'll be in another video if I do do and give that information out there. Where's the blessed, uh, let's see, mysterious, powerful, rare things? Where? Uh, hey, where's the best place to sell factory sealed VHS tapes, Amazon or eBay? Um... You know, you can sell them on either one. Just do some comp search on it. That's all you got to do. Just comp it on Amazon and comp it on eBay. I would list them in both places if I was you. If you've got a professional business account on Amazon, it's thirty nine ninety nine. You can list 100,000 items if you want for that same thirty nine ninety nine. That's what I would do. Any stuff like that, if it's new NOS stock and I can sell it on Amazon, it goes on both sites. On Amazon, I do price it higher than I would on eBay as well, too, because I can get more money out of most every item I list on Amazon over eBay, but not everyone. There's some video games that sell higher on eBay over Amazon. I did. I showed some video games there. And um, if you're un, un, unaware, um, what's the game that I had in there? Oh, shoot. Now I'm brain dead on what the game was in there. Oh, um, uh, Luigi's Mansion. Look up Luigi's Mansion on Comps. On Amazon, it's like 30 bucks as a standard. Now, if it's in collectibles category, which I'm debating, was debating on switching it over to, it can go for higher on collectibles in Amazon. But on eBay, I can get 50 bucks all day long on a complete copy in mint condition or near mint condition of Luigi's Mansion. It's a GameCube game. It can be played on Wii, so it's not like dated. You can still use the game on a modern system. So something like that is a good example. you got to know which platform is best. And as a collectible version, you have to have the insert postcard, you have to have the warning sheet, the book, the original artwork, the original case, and a nice uh, black lettered edition of that game if you're talking about Luigi's Mansion. I've played it many times. In fact, I've played the version I just got to make sure. Of course, I did play a little longer than I really needed to, but I do like the Mario games. I do play a few. I did grow up on the old, um, you know, Nintendo Entertainment System with uh, Mario Brothers, uh, you know, the whole line, the whole series. I've played them all. You know, um, Yoshi's Island on, on Game Boy is one of my favorite games. I do play it on an emulator on um, the big screen sometimes, too. Yoshi's Island, it's a good game. Uh, anyway, it's one of the first ones I've ever played all the way through Mario-wise. You've saved sa a thousand switching to Geico. Okay, Chris. Chris is in a good mood, it sounds like. Hopefully things are going well with you, Chris. Uh, Mark, can you hide your soul? Yeah, I already did that one, Mark. I may be setting a private listing. Private listing just hides the person that you're selling it to, basically. You can also hide your feedback, uh, individual feedback as well, which some people do. If they leave you feedback, though, on a listing that um, you deleted it and hit it, you can track it down through your feedback. So just FYI, you can't tell the person's name, so to speak, anymore. Back in the day, you could go into somebody's feedback and see the name of all the buyers and sellers and, and then go to their page and track it down. Uh, nowadays, they've, thank, thank goodness, blocked that feature. But You can't necessarily hide the public listing, Chris, but you can hide it from showing up in a sold, in the solds, in the comps. You can stop someone from looking at your comps. So if you sold something, it won't ever go because it's going to be show it as zero quantity and show it as still live. So at the end of the day, you delete it instead of ending it. And then it's still active until you delete it and then it's gone. It was deleted before it could end technically. It has to end, physically end. And if it's a zero quantity listing, it doesn't end. So that's the, the gimmick on that aspect of it. It's just like on Amazon. Um, I've got some that I just, when they go to zero, they're, they're always there. And like um, there's specific records that I get over and over again. I can just change the quantity. There's a specific Glenn Miller I've talked about many times that I always have an active listing for several of those on Amazon all the time because literally I get them in sometimes every other week I can find the same disc. Good, good car on there. As long as they're tar grouped together, you'll do the best. Hey, Swamp Picker, welcome to the show, Swamp. Question, other than your wife and kids, have you helped anyone else in your family? friend group or extended family get into selling online 
thanks on the artwork. Jamie, um, back in the day, I helped somebody in, in Florida. I went in and bought out a bookstore that used to be in downtown Mount Dora, and it was an antique bookstore, and the gentleman's grandparents owned and created Frosty, the root beer company and, and stuff. And the guy was well-to-do, and I, I didn't have have enough experience so I, the guy was interested and I did show him and we made a lot of money on the books that was the first experience before Amazon scanning that I ever did books and um, the first book that I got a ton of money on was the Talbot Odyssey by Nelson DeMille if you don't know that book look it up the Talbot Odyssey it's back in the day I used to get like $500 a copy for that book day in and day out every day I could run across one of those I sold it's a fairly rare book but um, I had several copies of it from that store we sold like um I want to say like 127 books, and we, we almost doubled our money from that, but we sold some top dollar notch. He had stuff in the back of that store. I, I, I love that sort of stuff, let's just say. I have helped a few people in the past. Um, I was originally doing a mentor thing on uh, Patreon, but I just don't have the time. It I'd have to charge so much to dedicate personal time, you know, one-on-one -on -one like that, that it just wasn't practical for me to do it. Um, and I... I, I I'm not trying to say I'm worth a fortune of money, but it's a lot of work to spend an hour and spend the time to research and do stuff on that, you know, and, and stuff. And I just, I'm not into mentoring anybody these days um, much anymore at all. I don't have many, most most of my family thought, you know, it's a joke, you're not going to make a living and made fun of what I do for years of my life, before we did it full time especially. Yeah, Steve, I'm gonna, I've been covering stamps somewhat in my Patreon videos. I'm not going to cover stamps on YouTube at all, just FYI. Stamps are a category that I do still collect some items in, and um, I can't say it's a secretive group, but most people don't share much information on stamps, and I'm going to keep it that way for me personally, just because I do love stamps. Um, I do have my father's collection still and stuff, and some of those belong to his parents, so my grandparents. So I, I don't give away stuff too much openly on stamps. I don't want the world to kill an area that that i love so anyway i had the boy scout merit badge and stamp collecting even if that tells you anything that goes back to way back in the day uh let me see here hang on let me see if the feedback will or my uh chat will uh, it just it's gone hang on just a second hang on i think uh okay i'm getting close just a second Went to the Goodwill bins for the first time while I was in Nashville. I guess you were with the uh, Scott's uh, Nashville meetup, I would imagine. I have not been to a bins. Now, we could have went to one in Columbus, and there's one three hours from here, but I'm just not interested in the clothing aspect anymore. It's not worth a six-hour round-trip drive or staying somewhere. And we were there in Columbus, too, a few weeks back, and I still didn't want to mess with it. it just the, the clothing rubs me the wrong way these days. Capri Sparks, how are you doing? Hang on. That's uh, bouncing all over. Yeah, I've seen the fight videos at some of the Goodwill bins, Chris. I know exactly what he's talking about. Swatting at the NAT. Yeah, Mary, just be careful on it. Um, if you're talking about Dayton, Ohio, you're probably talking about a Jefferies, if that's where you're talking about. Um, I've sourced at Jefferies, too. It's off I-75. Well, it's on I-75. You can see it right there at Dayton. It's just right past... Um, I don't think... No, that's not... I think Jefferies is before Dayton. It's before Wright Patterson exit, I think, somewhere in that range. I know it's about an hour from my house. So I do go down that way occasionally, if that's the one you're talking about. Yeah, people anywhere can be downright mean when you're sourcing. I've had people do all kinds of nasty things trying to get something ahead of me. Uh, yeah, the bins are acquired taste. Yeah, Duncan, I often get postcards among collections of stamp covers, documents I get in lots, some of the old uh, letters... Got a slavery letter, and you're talking big money. Yeah, I've had a few of those, too. Yeah, and I do love the history. That is part of the, the fun of it. David Rubino, same thing. Loves paper. Yeah, 
MW Alabi. I'm sure I butchered that. I'm sorry. Welcome. Well, it has to be the Don, Dom, and Chris show now, Mary. We're on my channel now. Well, let's pop on down. Are real to reels worth any money? I've got one in a video from the other day. We did a haul. I spent five bucks on a box of real to reels, and our return on the investment's over seven hundred dollars. We sell real to reels anytime I can get them. Four track stereo, two track. Um, as long as it's the original box, you want the original reel. I sell reel to reels anytime I can get them. I've sold thousands of reel to reels in my day. Reel to reels are better than records in some cases. Um, the classics you want. Zeppelin, the Beatles. Um, I sold a white album by the Beatles on reel to reel for over four hundred dollars for that one. So uh, blanks do well as long as you have the right blanks too. You can search up comps, John, on those as well. So just check out some comps on those. It has to be good quality ones to sell for good money. The junks, uh, Sony, and the cheaper brand names on blanks aren't worth much at all. Night Midwest Picker, glad to have had you. There you go, Mary. That is it. I'm bad on names. I haven't seen them, but maybe once or twice. I don't watch too many other channels. Inline two track. Yep. Um, Michael, two track inline don't bring the most in in my personal experience. The ones that bring the most are some of the harder to get rock, three four hundred dollars. I've sold those far higher for like a Doors or a Beatles than I ever have a two track inline. The two tracks that usually sell the best, in my opinion, have been classical ones. Um, uh, Herbert von Karajan or something along that line usually sells very good, especially if it's a German pressed one. Those are usually the bomb. The foreign ones are always the best ones of those, in all honesty. West First Books, how are you doing? Galaxy 5000, welcome. Yeah, see, Galaxy 5000 has got a picker now and the same kind of things that I get too. Yeah, Chris, with, with finding them, I never said, hey, look for stuff. It just turned into that. I ran into these people at flea markets and stuff like that or auctions. And he'd say, what you looking for, this, that, and the other thing. And after talking so many times and stuff, he just invited me over to his house once. you know. And I was sure, what the heck? And that's where it started. It wasn't something I was originally trying to get. It just happened. Um, and then after I figured out how to get them, then I started looking for people that I could recruit so to speak we pay a, a finder's fee so it does work when you pay a finder's fee for some items so if somebody knows they can get 50 bucks for just giving me someone's number who's going to help me out and get me something it, it's a done deal it, it, it's easy now chris ain't gonna feed you bs any further updates from your cell bright? I will have something shortly. As I said, um, October, second week in October is our, our tentative date to start talking about it more. We hope to have everything done by then. So cell bright is coming. We're still using it. It's still working fine. Just a lot of time and process. Yeah, Michael, the real to real, the classical, I just said that, as I said, the, the classical stuff for 100 to 200. A rock and roll one can sell up to say a, a thousand, even if you get the right one. So, the the four track stereos of the Beatles and rock and and garage bands, three four times what the the inline ones go for. In all honesty, check it out yourself. There are other um, others than seven and a quarter um, IPS inches per second. Um, as well, some of those you have to watch out for um, and things as well too, because some machines won't play all of those too. So some of the older ones anyway. No, I don't mean um, collectibles condition. I I sell video games in the collectibles category. If that's what you're talking about, Chris, on Amazon, I there's a collectibles category for video games. Anything you can think of, there's a collectibles category. So if I'm gated on new items. Um, I can always sell them in collectibles. I can sell, I'm, I'm gated in new CDs, but I can sell used CDs in the collectibles section any day of the week or in the entertainment collectibles section any day of the week as well. Um, so there is a collectibles category on Amazon as well, and I am ungated in that. Um, and we, there's a couple folks in my group that are still trying to get in there. Maybe they locked down the category, but I've been in there for so long and I've been ungated forever in collectibles. You can sell almost any type of thing like that that's media in the collectibles section and get it up on Amazon without anything or anybody doing anything against you as a collectible. So anyway...
Jennifer, I don't know if you're talking to Dom or me on there. You got Dom on there. Um, I do ship um, uh, Merchant Fulfilled. All collectibles are Merchant Fulfilled on Amazon. The only things I ship to Amazon would be mint boxed new items um, for anything. Anything I do. Sealed records are fine. I'll ship those in. Sealed CDs, I will ship those in. Sealed VHS or DVDs or Blu-rays, I ship those all in to Amazon as FBA. They go twice as fast, three times as fast, even four times as fast when you do that. And usually I'll get a little more than I would if I had them up on um, eBay. So it, it pays for the difference in those, in all honesty. Yeah, I do the same thing on that. There's some information I'll never give out. Um, if I'm dying, maybe I'd give it to one or two people in my life. But I've got some things that if people knew, boy, you know, let's, I'm not going to get any farther than that. But I've, I've got some really good ends on some things that's taken me a long time to figure out. Uh, anyway. Hang on just a second feeds all over the place. Let's see what time it is. I haven't paid attention at all. Yes, yeah, I'll go till 9 and we'll stop it at 9. You save emails from orders and sent customer email campaigns. I don't usually do that unless it's somebody I've been dealing with for a while. Are you talking about specific like on Amazon or not? West First Books? It depends on what you're talking about. I have lists of people that buy from me. I don't draw the line and send people personal stuff anymore trying to drum up more business. I don't need to, uh, just for that matter. Um, just like I don't send out offers to watchers much, hardly at all, even though I've got, I think I can send out like 2,600 right now if I wanted to. And I don't bulk those either. I know you can bulk them out once, but each item has a, a different um, uh, mount I would send. So I don't need to do it. I don't, I'm running a little promotion thing on, I think like a quarter in one quarter of my items in one store for like one or 2%, but that's about all I'm even touching on. I don't need to do any more than that. You know, I'm not going to give it away. Fourth quarter is just around the corner. And with us pushing the items to other platforms, you know, staggering them out, I, I could be giving away stuff cheaper than I could sell them for another platform. So right now I'm just holding off on trying to sell anything quick at all because, you know, once we hit all these items across the platform, it should broaden my reach. And we've got another, you know, uh, hidden secret in the bag right now that's going to help push sales to one of our, our streams as well, too. So, um I got stuff going on behind the scenes. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, Dayton, Ohio. Jeffries is just down the road from you on 75. Look up Jeffries, Mary. They have a decent place, but there's only like three booths in there that you can find reasonable paper in. It is worth the trip down there. I Last time I was down there, I got some hand watercolored prints from 1816. Didn't know. They had them for four bucks a piece. I got them at half off, so $2 each. And I ended up selling them each for like one seventy five. So that's just the two items. I bought a bunch of other stuff there, but there's there's many big malls you can go to. If you don't have the bigger sources, antique malls have always been a place. We sourced before I knew what sourcing was or flipping or any of that stuff. I used to go to antique stores and malls. No, no problem, Mary at all. I figured maybe by the the tone and the conversation, that's what you're meaning. Mark, been sourcing for two years, still looking for a reel. I just had a box. If you watch a video, in fact, I just found another single one like yesterday. I find reel-to-reels probably um, three times a month, maybe, somewhere in that range. But I've got, you know, many contacts. You know, it's not just me looking. There's eight or nine other people that can source out for me. Plus, I've got people that I can call stores. Um, I got a Rolodex, basically, a digital Rolodex of places I call every so often on a rotational basis and ask, did you get this in, did you get that in? You know, they know who it is usually calling when they when I call. So, something you got to do. You're welcome, John. Again, for those who don't know, I do have the other channel. I said I'd put it out there one more time. Let me just put this out there one more time. I do have a second channel that's just going to be discussing creating things, either art or crafts, that you can sell and make money on. And I'm going to go into other platforms. We're going to talk a lot about Etsy as well, and we're going to go into other, other platforms and selling and making money. This is the other channel here that I just popped onto the feed. The art in there, the actual illustration is for sale. I do get questions on it. I very rarely sell an original, but I will sell this one here because I've got a couple eyes here right now. 
There is a link down in the description and in the comments section, not in the chat, but down in the description with a link to that actual live listing of that illustration from the live, or from that uh, the art professor video. So if you're interested in something live or a, a original piece of artwork, this is your chance. I don't sell many originals like that, so. <clears throat> I have talked about a mark at reel to reels occasionally. I do, um, I do show them when I get them occasionally. I did get some other ones like two weeks ago that I didn't show. Um, I have sold three out of them, which is the only three I listed. The other ones are going to be set aside for Christmas matter because they're in really nice condition. And I got like the Nutcracker Suite and a few other things. They're Christmas ones, so I'll be able to crank top dollar out of those on Amazon. Um, you know, the month before in, in November they'll go up. Maybe end of October. I'm not sure yet. Do you have luck selling as collectible? Yes, I do, 100%. Yeah, Pink Floyd would be pretty hard. It depends on the album you're talking about. They all have individual pricing schemes on them. You can look up reel-to-reels on Pop Psych as well many times. Same thing with Cylinder Records. I sell all the above. If it's if it's media, it's it's sold by us. Every form of media that they make, including wire recordings, I will sell. Every one. You know, I've had pretty much anything you can imagine that's that's recorded material. And if you don't know, a player piano roll is a recording as well. So just FYI. Again, I know I'm bad on this, but if you haven't hit the like button, just slam that like button down there for us if you're enjoying the conversation. Again, I'm trying to give you honest, sincere, real life uh, you know, information here. I've been doing this for, you know, since eBay was called eBay, the very first year. Do you MF merchant fulfill because it takes longer to sell in collectibles category? Depends on the item. Most collectible items I do not send in at all to Amazon. And most collectible items that are in a collectibles category, I cross list them as well too on multiple platforms. Well, thank you, Hustle and Grind. We're about down to the bottom for once. I'm very rare to actually make it to the bottom of my feed. And I do apologize, but I do hit every single question that I get to. So uh, just an FYI. Uh, content coming out. Volo video is, I think, done. Patreon, again, for those who are just catching us on for Patreon. Um, I'm going to be splitting up the guide. The first part should be out tomorrow, Saturday at the latest. I will probably have a little shorter video out tomorrow on Patreon as well as, of course, a video here. I'm going to be going into some newer aspects and new avenues on this channel, all related to flipping and stuff. I may touch some more on Amazon as well. If you don't know, we do Amazon, Etsy, and the whole works. If there's a platform out there, we do it as long as it's a decent size. I did Poshmark. I don't do it because I don't mess with clothing. Um, Recreary is too small. Bonanza is too small for us. Ruby Lane is too expensive and is such a niche that the sales-wise, you pay so much for it that the, the folks that I know who have done it don't do it for that reason, so I don't mess with that either. But I get the main ones. Walmart, we are, are clear to sell on there as well and have some items up. Um, it just depends on what you're selling, what your market is. I also sell locally nowadays quite often. We'll do locals, local deals. We'll purchase wholesale. I'll sell locally wholesale. It, it doesn't matter anymore. I've I've done things that I thought you know I wouldn't want to do or this or that. I thought it'd be a pain or a hassle. It hasn't been the case. It, it's gotten to be a thrill to find a new way to make money to me. That's a, a challenge, you know, especially if somebody says they tried it and they never made money on it. That's like an open challenge to see, can I beat that challenge and, and figure a way to make money doing something that, you know, others have said can't be done. You know, most people would say you, you can't make a fortune doing postcards and stuff. And I've had people sit there and try and analyze and, you know, it's sitting there telling you if you overall break down the structure, you're only getting, you know, $2 a card and all this other stuff. It depends on how your, your game plan works. As an anchor store, I pay two cents or less for the first 10,000 listings. It's cheap to sell. My margin of income from that is horrendous. So, you know, it, the, your fees are minuscule. You know, I make an 80% profit margin across the board after my fees, after my labor, after my cost of goods. The only thing that is not deducted out of that would be my income tax at the end of the year. That's the only thing I'm not accounting for in that 80%. It's roughly, it fluctuates. So on certain weeks, it can be down to 76%. I've had it up as high as like 823 
It just depends on what I'm selling that week. And I sell a large amount, you know. If you're selling $850 or $1,000 a day, depending on your store, you know, $3,000 a month is nothing on your fees. You know, and I've spent $5,000 a month on eBay fees in one store before. And that's nothing. You, you say $5,000 is a lot of money. It's only a lot of money if you're not making any money. If you're selling $40,000 or $30,000 and you're paying three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 in fees, is that three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 in fees really a consideration? You know, if you're walking home and in end of day putting twenty grand in the bank at the end of the month, and you had to spend three thousand dollars, you had to spend twenty three thousand to get that twenty thousand. Is that a problem? Is that is that an issue for you? Should that be an issue for you? No, it shouldn't be because you're making enough money to cover your fees. Now, if your fees are two thousand a month and you're only selling twenty two hundred dollars worth of merchandise, obviously it's not working for you. But that's not that's not what works for us. That's not the structure. The other thing that I get asked once a day is, what's your sell-through rate? I don't care what a sell-through rate is. I have no concern over a sell-through rate whatsoever. I don't care if something's up for a long time. Because the end of the day is all my fees are paid and we're making this big amount of money at the end of the day, this profit percentage. I don't care how long it sits up there. That doesn't matter. It, it's not a factor. The, the, the collectibles and antique industry has always been this way. An antique store doesn't have a sell-through rate. They never have. Antique stores have been around for over 100 years, and this has always been the model for it. It works online. It's the same model that you know big antique dealers do. They'll have tens of thousands of items in their store sometimes. Sell-through rate doesn't mean anything. As long as you're covering your costs and getting uh, in credit or a percentage over and above that, the sell-through rate is pointless. I don't pay any attention to a sell-through rate. Not to drill that in, but I get asked that question every day of my life. And, um, you know, if you, I know I don't just say it all the time because to me it's just a no brainer. There is no sell through rate. It doesn't matter. I don't care. When I look at, you know, the percentage of fees and then I look at how much money I did above and beyond all of my fees and my costs, I, I don't care. It doesn't matter. It, it's, it's a mute point in my platform. If, if you're set up differently, you've got to have a sell-through rate. It only works with the way I've got my business or somebody else who's found another way to work it. You can't do that with news. You can't do that when you're starting out. You have to worry about a sell-through rate in clothing, video games, electronics, all these. Because if you're not selling the items, you're not getting any money back, especially if you only have a few hundred items, a thousand items, or whatever the case may be. But if you got 65, well, 66, 67, 67,000 listings, it's not that much of a concern. Those listing fees are not as much as you would think. And I've showed videos on the fees. It's just like when people talk about, like, Scott or people driving around and spending all the money in gas. If you spend $1,000 a week in gas, but you're making $10,000 a week in profits... The gas doesn't mean anything. It's just a cost. It's an overhead. It's like running electricity in a building to list. It's the same principle. Different numbers, the same concept, the same principle. It works. It's a no-brainer. I don't worry about many different things that many other sellers say is key to running a business. There's most of the YouTubers out there who sell clothing or any stuff or don't sell what I sell mostly, constantly preach on the, the sell-through rate. That may 100% be the case for what they're selling and what they're telling you they sell. But for me, that's not the case. Enough on that. I don't want to beat a dead horse here. Um, thanks for sharing. I'll watch you again. Well, thank you. Rockbird Torwita. I'm sure I butchered, and I do apologize. I'm bad on names sometimes. Good that you got my message about the postcards that was rotated. Yeah, thanks. That was you. Okay, thank you very kindly. Sometimes we'll get distracted. I've got multiple people who list, so I don't. I didn't even go back and worry about who it was. I've done that myself. It happens. What is it? Five thousand is global shipping going away? Not to my knowledge. Um, they fixed the global shipping program stuff, as far as I can say, or it's going to be fixed because before you couldn't uh, ship with. Um, I use the uh, Master Scan sheet with eBay. Uh, we didn't we used to use a third party. Now I just do separate master scan sheets because I it's I haven't had an issue doing it that way. I had issues with scan sheets with third party. But eBay has now brought into the fold we printed um, global shipping from the main page without without having to go to anywhere else. So they've already started to integrate it and you can take all the payments. PayPal is now on the new processing fully. Just like before because I just paid for some um, um, shoot what did I just buy? I bought um, 
3,000 of the 5x7 sleeves that I showed in that video the other day. And I had to use um, the new payment system, and it went straight through in PayPal like nothing, just like a normal PayPal payment. So the new payment system, I'm really honestly thinking about switching the store I share with you right over really soon before waiting because I've now, I, I did a call out the other day, and I got a lot of people telling me that they do have an increase, a proven increase from switching over the new payment system especially for the ones that are being pulled in from Google because most people don't have the normal account and then they can pay by many different means. So I'm honestly, seriously thinking about moving it over. As far as I know, global shipping is not going away anywhere. I come across West First Books. I come across a ton of 1900s and older paper printed material. Then when I look it up, see $5 or less, but I don't want to throw away because it's over 100 years old. If you're not finding comps anywhere and you don't know your items, that's a tough one. I, I, I would have to see what you got to know, to give you an honest opinion. I would just lot them up if they're that old and they're decent items. If they're advertising with full color cards or anything like that, I would just lot them up in lots of like six or eight. Usually if it's like two-sided pieces of paper, I'll do lots of six so I can show front and back of all six items, like postcards. Now, sometimes if it's cheaper stuff, I'll do, you know, 12 individual fronts of postcards and sell lots of 12. Or we'll sell lots of 100, lots of 500, lots of 1,000, whatever the case may be. Bookkeeping. I'm not going to get into bookkeeping. Everybody has their own means and ways. Um, yeah. You can do, let's just put it this way, you can do any means of accounting as long as it's consistent. You always do the same thing, and it accounts for certain things. On certain stores and certain types of businesses, depending on the amount of money you sell, you do not have to mark individual sales numbers. Now, I know somebody's going to tell you that's not true, but I'm going to tell you that it is. Not only is it true, but you can go to the government site, and there's actually statements stating that, you know, these facts that I just quoted you. I have an accountant just for end of year, and we also have another accountant for our uh, payroll. Um, I'm not going to get into bookkeeping, though, but everybody has their own preference. You have to justify whatever means of bookkeeping you do. So there are many forms of doing it. Many people do not have to keep daily sales numbers, or I'll sh I should say daily sales numbers don't matter really at all for accounting. They matter... Your number, your end of the month, your end of the quarter, your end of the year numbers are what matters. And your dailies don't matter. I do dailies, though, for my own benefit and for my sales reports that I put together. I do a P&L at the end of every week, profit and loss statement, just like I would as a regional manager for my businesses. Because now my P&L has you know, nine different platforms that are all, all at the end of the week. I've got to put nine different sites together and come up with a total number of income from all those sites. So I do things differently than most people. I use Excel for that. I do have some forms that I do have available in my Patreon group, and I think there's a video out here that has a few of them too. Everybody doesn't have to item or itemize and do individual items for a list, depending on many factors. And I'm not going to go into the specific factors. But if you don't have an accountant, I would honestly at least call around. What you can do for an accountant, most of them will give you a free consultation, an initial 30-minute consultation. Get all your questions down on a piece of paper. Look up any information to get rid of the questions that you can find your own answers to. Find one of these guys in town. Do the 30 minutes for free. At least you'll get some of your answers answered. If they won't answer your questions, don't go to them for your services. We sat down with one, and I had all, everything I wanted on a tablet. I went in there, and one by one, I hit him up quickly in the freebie. And then I decided after his answers to my questions... And his history, because I looked him up with the Better Business Bureau, and I made sure my accountants don't have a criminal record of any kind. And after he answered the questions to, to my benefit, including some that I knew the answers to, I decided from there whether I was going to hire him. There's many options to do accounting, so don't think that you have to do one way or the other. You have to justify it, and you cannot change. You have to be able to, to bona fide the reason why you picked a specific means. Um, you know, everything that I do in... in these, these, these things that I'm telling you right now are questions and stuff that I ran over with an accountant. Not just one, but two, because I've talked to one, we didn't care for him as much, and we went to a second one and, and did the same thing, the 30-minute free and the whole work. So, you know, there's many other ways to do it, and, and, and other people will say that's not true, but they probably don't know as much. I've taken accounting classes. We handled taxes as well in college. 
I did it as a profession. Um, as a regional, we had to do a lot of these types of things. I talked with, you know, uh, accounts payable, accounts receivable, um, the payroll departments, financing, financial departments for major companies. And, you know, there's more ways than one to do your inventories. Some people do not necessarily have to do an inventory. They do it on a cost basis for the end of the year. So if you, let's say you have, uh, you buy um, $1,000 worth of merchandise in one month, that's considered an expense. And your expenses are weighed against your income minus your fees. That's an accounting method. It's a cash base, cash in, cash out. It's a bona fide method, but they don't take a physical inventory, so to speak, like you or I or somebody else might necessarily have to. There's many different options for accounting. Sit down with an accountant. I honestly recommend that. Especially, I know West First Books, I know you want to do this as a full-time basis. At some point, you're going to need an accountant or you're going to need a lawyer or somebody to file some paperwork with you, whether you go to an LLC or you do an S Corp. An S Corp, you definitely, you can be done by yourself, but I would recommend getting in. And it's probably going to cost you anywhere from 1000 to 1500 for an S Corp. But your whole tax structure is going to change and, and many other things change with that. You'll be an employee. You're going to save money, thousands possibly. So there's a lot of different options you have for this. But again, I can't recommend anyone. I'm not going to recommend anything that could, you know, put your business in jeopardy. I am not a legal expert nor an accountant specialist, but I can tell you that what I've just stated are straight from the, the IRS's site. I've read them myself. I looked into everything before going to accountants. I even pulled up my old college book on some things um, to make sure that I was I was correct on things when I went in and asked these questions. So use that as a judgment. Sit down with somebody for free. That's your best, honest personal opinion on getting um, more play on this. Sit down with an accountant for free. Call around. And most of the ones who need the business will do it. Um, like for a lawyer wise, you can also get free lawyers or real cheap lawyers. What you do is you call down to your um, your bar association. Here the Toledo Bar Association has people who just graduate f with their, their um, law degree. And we have a law college here as well. So what I do if I need something like that and there's somebody just coming out, they might not know all the information, but you can sit down and get a lot of good legal information from the bar association in your town. And they're usually dirt cheap or free depending on your level of income. So keep that in mind when you need something like a lawyer or want to run something by them. There's different types of lawyers. There's patent attorneys. There's ones that handle copyright. There's you know many different aspects of it. So and we've dealt with most of those. I've had patent searches. We own a, a copyright. I own a trademark. Um, you know, and we've got some other things going around. I've got DBAs and the whole works. And uh, you know, you're going to have to run into some of these when you get big enough. Just just FYI. So. You know, I know that was a long, long answer there, but hopefully that helps. Yeah, I'm debating on going out and grabbing something to eat here, too. Um, but we're going to have to cut it off here. I know I'm probably over what I originally said. It's a couple minutes past three or three minutes past the hour. Again, good content. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't hit the like button, hit the like button. As I said before, I do have the other channel, The Art Professor. There is links all over the place in the description, the comment line going to have videos. Everything on both channels is just going to be about making money in different ways. This channel obviously is reselling and flipping and making money on Amazon, eBay, Etsy, and all that. The other channel is just going to be art and craft related. I'm going to show you how to make things that you can make money with or stuff along that line. We're going to do a lot more in depth. We're going to go to some museums. We're going to go to some jewelers. We're going to go to some glass blowers and things along that line. Bazaars, Christmas events. I'm going to try and show you some more interesting content. So anyway, that's what I have for you today. <clears throat> Hopefully you enjoyed it. As I said, the original artwork is available too, something I very rarely do. Down in the comment section is a link to the listing that is active and live if you're interested. Again, I do have people that ask. I'm not trying to be pushy or brag about it, but it's there if somebody does want it. So again, I thank everybody for coming on and have a good evening.